Hi, my name is Abdul Subhani. Um, I will be the instructor for the IT security auditing class today. Um, my background is I'm an adjunct faculty member for Central Texas College and Texas A&M University, Central Texas. Uh, I'm also a Texas licensed private investigator. I'm a certified ethical hacker, certified in risk information systems control. I'm a certified fraud examiner. Uh, and some other IT certifications like Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, Cisco Certified Network Associate. And uh, I'm looking forward to teaching this class to you guys. And uh, please make sure if you have any questions, raise your hand and edit any time. And uh, I'll be happy to answer those, those questions for you. Uh, we uh, will be talking uh, in detail regarding the auditing first. Uh, we'll go with some basic definitions of it. And then later on, we will dive into uh, the actual IT security auditing as well. So if you have no questions, I'll be happy to start. Independent review and examination of records and activities to access the adequacy of system controls to ensure compliance with established policies and operational procedures and to recommend changes in controls, policies, or procedures. That is a definition that I have merged between the Wikipedia and some of the textbooks for you to understand what exactly the IT audit means. Who is an IT auditor? Now, it needs to be initially that we have IT auditors who were initially as an accountant. Then later on, they have went and got their computer science degrees. And they have an audit experience as an accountant. And then they went in into an auditing. There are several certifications out there which people usually take in order to be an IT auditor. Uh, CISA is one of them, Certified Information Systems Auditor. ASACA is the organization, actually, who provides that certification, is a very well known uh, around the world that majority of the people are getting their CISA in order to uh, become an IT auditor. Anybody who has a networking, hardware, software, information systems degree also can be, uh, get into an IT auditing field. Someone who knows everything an accountant does, but plus everything as a bachelor's of science or master's of science in computer science or related fields can also get into an IT auditing field. IT auditors are done in teams. So there will be an accounting uh, person in, and then there will be an IT auditing person who knows and understands the uh, IT portion of the audit. So it's usually uh, compiles with, uh, as we say, a computer geek or, and an accountant. So that will make up as an IT audit team. Uh, they will scope uh, depending on how big the audit is. If it's a huge, large co corporation, that can entail about five to 10 IT auditors, uh, which will basically will be going through the software applications, doing the audits, making sure people are changing their passwords, making sure they are doing the backups, there is a disaster recovery plan in place. So all those things entails the IT auditing part of it. Uh, needed to expertise, uh, expertise uh, varies because it depends on what kind of audit they are doing. If they're doing in a software applications audit, we need to make sure an IT auditor who understands the applications. For example, if they're doing an audit for QuickBooks, uh, uh, or a Peachtree Sage project um, product, then they will under, need to understand what controls that software application has. So they will be able to get that information um, and analyze it if they, uh, the organization is actually uh, compliance uh, by their software applications. As I mentioned, uh, a couple of other certifications as well. ASACA, uh, Information Systems Audit and Control Organization, is a well-known organization around the world. Uh, they have a CISA, Certified Information Systems Auditor uh, certification, and then they have CIS, which is the Certified Information Systems Manager uh, certifications. CISA requires the minimum of five years of IS auditing, control, or security work experience. 
Uh, it, they have a code of professional ethics, uh, adhering to IS auditing standards, and then they have exam topics of one management planning and organization of IS, and then the technical infrastructure and operational practices and protection of information assets. So it surely gives you uh, a good amount of experience and knowledge in order to go and do an IT audit if you have that certification. Uh, the exam topics, uh, again, are the disaster recovery and business continuity, business application, system development, acquisition, implementation and maintenance, business process evaluation, and risk management, and the IS audit process. The next one, CISP, uh, that came after the CISA, has exam topics of information security governance, risk management, information security program management, information security management, response management, and these are the topics which will cover to become a certified information systems manager. Now the next topic we are going to cover is steps of an IT audit. What exactly the steps you will take in order to do an IT audit? Uh, so the first one will be the planning phase, the second one will be the testing phase, and the third one, which is the most important one for any organization, is the reporting phase. How are you going to create a report? Because that report is the one which is going to go to the IT audit committee, to the board of the organization, and of course, the staff who, uh, who was involved in that uh, IT audit. Ideally, it's a continuous cycle. Again, not always the case because it depends on the organization, what their requirements are, and so forth. Majority of the time, first year, organizations do an internal uh, IT audit, and then second, uh, second year, they do an external IT audit, so they compare uh, what parts they have missed, the internal aud auditors missed, and what are the ones the external auditors are asking them to comply with next year. So under planning phase, there's entry meeting. So that will be the one where they will be actually meeting with the staff. If it's, for example, doing an audit for an applications, there will be their network administrator, their software applications director, uh, people who are in IT, and also the people who are actually using the software application. So they are actually going and meeting with them, asking them questions, uh, finding out uh, what exactly that they are seeing or they are having problems with or they think their concerns are. Second will be defining the scope. They will scope it, what exactly, how big this uh, audit will. It will, does it will take 10 days, it will take two weeks, it will take two months, depending on how big the organization again is and how much they would like us to audit. Third will be the learning the controls. So the controls that they have already, we need to know why they have created those controls. How we can, the, what is the leverage between those controls that they are trying to do? So that will be the third one. The fourth is the historical incidents. So any incidents happened in the last year, six months, two years, that will be a good idea for us to know about it beforehand. So in that way, we, we understand that incident happened in six months ago, what changes they have made in between six months and now. Past audits. It is always a good thing to know as an aud auditor if they already had past audits, what uh, kind of audits they have done. Did they even did the software applications audit? Did they ever done a hardware audit? Did they ever done a disaster recovery audit? So you would know a lot more information about the organization and their audits by looking at those. Site survey. So they need to do a site survey to figure out uh, what items do they have. Sometimes when you log in or walk into an organization, they do not even know what kind of softwares they have because some department went in and bought some software applications and they do not even know, the other department don't even know that they even have it. So uh, again, that is the information as a site survey you would be able to gather all the hardware uh, specifications as well. Questionnaires. Uh, is there any questionnaires that they are using and they would like for us to look at it? Uh, reviewing of the current policies. If there are policies out there, we need to go through it and making sure those policies are actually getting met. Uh, sometimes there are policies in place, but nobody is actually doing anything with them. 
Nobody, nobody is going and reviewing it again and saying, okay, this are getting met, these are not getting met, can we change them, can we just delete them because this does not pertain to us anymore. Defining the objectives. So objective of an IT audit, making sure this, whether we are getting this uh, audit getting done, we are actually going to be going and completing an objective of this audit. So we need to make sure the customer, the client, understands that that is an objective uh, is getting going to get met uh, in your report uh, in the end. Develop the audit plan and the checklist. So we need to create a checklist beforehand and making sure to give it to the customer so they understand what items that we will be going through. For example, making sure if you're doing next week and software applications audit, we know that the software applications department of that corporation will be there that week, will be there that day. Uh, they will be able to give us all the information. Sometimes people are reluctant to give that information to auditors uh, for, as you can imagine, obvious reasons. So we need to make sure uh, to check on them, making sure the CEO of the corporation, the CFO of the corporations, the audit team if they have, the compliance team they have, they understand that this will be the checklist that we will be needing the requirements of the organization. So defining objectives and data collection. So some points to keep in mind, uh, Department of Treasury, Office of Thrift Savings, Banking Regulations, uh, SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, HIPAA, which is uh, healthcare regulations, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, financial reports, document retention, and FARPA, Family Education Rights and Privacy, Privacy Act, which is the students' records, and the clearances. So these are uh, some of the things that will keep in mind while you're doing an audit if you have to comply with any of these, uh, uh, any of these regulations. So there's a lot of checklists that you are able to get um, uh, in order to do the audit. So if you're doing a, uh, a software applications audit, we need to make sure to check first of which software that it is. And we need to check on those uh, exactly, on those software applications, uh, what items we will have to be checking and create a checklist um, uh, for them. If there is a physical security that you need, for example, if you're doing a hardware audit, making sure how the laptops, where the lap laptops are, uh, are, uh, are getting kept. Is, there, is, is the laptops which are on the carts, are, there, are secured, if somebody can get an access to it or not. Um, what kind of services are running on those um, laptops or any kind of hardware that they're using? Is it desktops? Uh, is there any third-party applications they have installed on those computers? Uh, are you giving them administration rights uh, on those computers? So people can go and install their own software applications or not, or they need an administrative administrator to come and install those for you. So all these minor things that we do not see on, on a daily basis, we actually are able to go and audit them to make sure that they are comp uh, complying by it. Thank you.